Hello everyone. Today is Monday, August 1st, 2022 at 8:11 a.m. in the morning. <clears throat> so, um 24 days before me and my twin sister's birthday. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm 8. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm 38. Going on 39. And still being called little girl or girl, you know, being people, you know, being abusive and disrespectful towards me and stuff, you know, and, you know, people want to call me a little girl, but I was 35, no, I'm sorry, 37 or 38 years old and being told you damn near 40 years old by narcissistic abusers, but then they're the same people who call me disrespectfully and aggressively call me little girl and actually try to even talk to me and dis I mean abuse and disrespect me like a punished child and I'm forbidden or not allowed to speak about it you know and and then people young enough to be my child if I get into an altercation with them and they act you know a narcissistic control freak fake friend then they'll talk about, oh, I'm done being her babysitter or I'm done trying to handle her with small, young, white kid gloves and stuff like that, you know. I'm like, well, nobody told you to come into my life in the first place. Nobody told you to insult, I mean, I'm sorry, insert your life, in, insert yourself into my life in the first place, you know. So, um... So... I don't remember what time it was that I went to sleep last night, but um, I don't remember what time it was, but I, I, like, I was like blacking out off and on during the video last night, but I don't remember what time it was. But I dozed off and fell asleep. I had to use the bathroom like uh, quite a few times last night. But um, I was able to sleep much better. But I'm still, I still have sleep debt. I'm still sleep deprived. That's why my words haven't made, my words at the beginning of this video weren't coming out properly. Um, so I slept hard. And slept intensively, you know, slept deep and hard. And one dream I had, I actually got housing or got a place to live in that dream. But I've been trying for so long and so many years, you know, and people don't like, go get a job. I get a job. It's hard to get it. And then when I do get it, they workplace mob me. That's why I heard that other targeted individuals had that same experience. If they said that it's hard for them to get a job and they can't get much of nothing. And they got to have forced low wage jobs despite having like a master's degree or something. Or that nobody want to hire them because they are too overqualified and stuff like that. You know. If people didn't want to hire me for janitorial despite having a bachelor's degree, then um, they'll say you're too overqualified or, or something like that. Or you end up blacklisted, you know, being targeted. And so it's hard to find something. And then I heard that the only way that the gang stalkers will allow you to have a job is it has to be forced low income, um, low wage jobs, and they they set the stage for workplace, I mean, they set up shop for workplace mobbing before they hire you. And that's how that works. So I read a couple of websites, more than one, that say most targeted individuals usually run their own business or self-employed or they try to do something by themselves but i guess they have to have housing in order to do that you know so it's like 
they want me to, it's, it's like that, it's, it's like, I bet you that the online gang stalkers know and believe the truth about me, but are getting paid to pretend like as if they think I'm lying and getting paid to keep up the narrative about, false narrative about me. Because, you know, I've talked about throughout the years how the foster family used to block me from working. You know, the, it was hard to convince the foster mom to let me have that first job. I actually wanted to work since I was 14. I wanted a job. And I heard there was some newspaper job. I guess that was before the situation happened, you know. And I didn't get the newspaper job. They, I guess they ended up not hiring me. But I heard that you can be young as 14 and do a newspaper job back then, you know. But, um... But here in Pensacola, they have 14 and 15 year olds working that they can start working. But in New Orleans, Louisiana, you had to be 16 or something in order to start working and had had to have a work permit. But certain jobs, you got to be at least 18. A lot of jobs, you got to be at least 18. So um, nobody wanted to hire me. And I was treated very rudely and with abuse with trying to get a job here and there. My twin sister got a job instantly at Pizza Hut. But me, it's like I had to face so much discrimination before I even started work. And then when I went through my first job at Popeye's, they put me through hell. And then I got fired for reporting the manager for sexual harassment. And the manager, the other manager, was not shy about letting me know that um she was not shy about letting me know that no it wasn't about your outburst it was about your accusation of sexual harassment and sexual harassment means suit so that's the reason why she she admitted that that's the reason why she gave me the pink slip and fired me but the other females he used to that the white guy he used to um sexually harass them too or, you know, make sexual advance. I mean, come on, I'm freaking 17 years old, and you're trying to act like you want me to lick, I mean, like you um was eating a biscuit and then licked all over it and then said, oh, you want a piece? And then um he acted like he wanted me to, um you know, he acted like he wanted me to take him to, as a um date to prom, my prom and stuff, which I didn't get to go to anyway. And he had a wife and a lot of mixed kids, like a Hispanic-looking wife and a lot of mixed kids. And so if I refused his sexual advances, he used to try to force me to wash walls as a punishment and stuff. So they harassed me so to the point the way I freaking snapped. I, I mean, I... I, I snapped and went off and then he tried to talk about my outburst was inappropriate well how about your sexual um you know your sexual advances at underage girls is freaking um inappropriate and then they said that that oh when um when people heard your outburst they um when people heard your outburst they they heard they, um they called 1-800 Popeye and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm like, well, people should, that place should have been shut down, you know, because they had some corrupt, all three of the managers were corrupt and crooked. But Mr. that the white guy, he was doing stuff like taking females in the office and for, for hours and then doing like who knows what sexual stuff with them, you know, and me being just busy in the back washing dishes, I wanted to work drive through or be a cashier. And they tried, before I even started, they're like, you're, we're going to put you in the back because you're slow. And they kept repeatedly telling me that. And then they were giving me like four hours a week at first. And then it's like, I wanted to, I was eager and wanted to work, you, you know. So, um, it's like, then they started to give me, increase my hours, but then cheat me out my checks. And they, they just did me all kinds of fucked up and dirty, you know. And then 
But, but I mean, yeah, I was workplace mob the first job ever since the, they had an agenda the first day because when I kept trying to get the job, they led me on to, to playing all kinds of mind games and led me on, like led me on a wild goose chase and was just playing games that led led me to think, oh, we're gonna hire you this day or and, and it's like I people told me well if they if they lead you on to think that you you know. If they need you on to think that they're going to hire you, then keep on them and, you know, keep asking about the application. Or, or like, But they're going to think I'm aggravating or annoying. They say, so what? Keep doing it. Let them know you, you're really persistent about wanting to work. But other jobs like the bowling alley job and stuff like that, like, they treated me like a pest and basically told me go away. But I'm like, well, y'all are hiring, but y'all, like, and a lot of other jobs it's like there's all these now hiring signs and, and they will hire any and everybody except me. Like at Burger King, that was not all that far from Popeye's and fake Gretna, the the hardcore Butch Man Dyke, uh, Stacey Tamborella. Um, she sat there and um, ha- like after I got fired from Popeye's, it was a little while later on and I didn't even realize they were connected. And so she... um had up a sign now hiring first come first serve and then I was the first to arrive at Burger King for the interview and she forced me to wait until last and interviewed everybody except me and then didn't even hire me but then later on I heard that she hired my twin sister to work and my twin sister worked for a short time or something like that and then let her do drive through and everything and so my twin sister she worked at Popeye's for like over I'm sorry she worked at Pizza Hut for over a year. Well, I only lasted not even five. I mean, I'm sorry, not even four, four, not even four whole. Like it was almost four months. Not even four full months. You know, over three and a half, but under four months at Popeyes for me. And then they would try to say, "Oh, we can't hire." You know, both the, like the guy said that he can. New Orleans had this stupid law that um you couldn't hire two siblings to work at the same job but um certain other places like at Popeyes I saw two sisters working um they were both working at Popeyes but um you know it's like people like to choose favoritism and then turn around and call you jealous when you point out them treating you unfair and singling you out and stuff you know so um i'm just you know letting y'all know that i've been gang stalked and targeted and trolled since you know since before i even turned 15 and went to high school so um So, I mean, so I don't know. But it's like, and so, um, I'm, I'm, um, have been wanting to um you know work for so many years and the, like I was 19 or 20 years old after I left Nickel State University I kept trying kind of kept trying to get a job here and there and the first the even when I was 18 the foster mom kept trying to sabotage my my attempts at work and stuff and you know me trying to get a job because she was greedy for my social security check, back pay check the social security check and so um. You know, she thought, I mean, it's like, how the hell are you going to be greedy over a $500 a, a, dollar a month check? When you drive a whole BMW, you got this big house and stuff, and you're going to take the little bit that I have? Like, she, the foster mom fought tooth and nail to pull strings to get me Social Security just so she could have it for herself. And thankfully, she was never my payee, but she kept lying to people and saying she was my payee over my checks. So then... I asked Social Security one day. They said, no, the foster mom is not your payee. You your own payee. You know, and so I found my independence and freedom. But when 
the foster mom, you know, she stole the back pay check. And, um, I don't, it was like 3000 nine hundred forty six dollars was the um social security back pay check so i got a little bit over half of that back in 2019 and somebody the people i'm sorry in 2017 because i had 2019 dollars back pay of social security in 2017 in 2017 i had um social security like two thousand nineteen dollars up fifteen years later and they were saying something about that the foster mom lied or was dishonest or something and that's why I was able to get some of that back paid back. Yeah, after over fifteen years later. Maybe like seventeen years later I ended up and guess where that money had to go to? Me moving into my section eight home and and I mean I was that was when I just got back to New Orleans. And I had just got back to New Orleans, and I, um, yeah, I had just got back to New Orleans, and I had just, um, and, and I stayed by Ramona for like six days, but, I, I, no, maybe I stayed by her for like two or three days and just had enough of her shit and then just went to the Salvation Army shelter for two nights maybe and then one night I stayed at this hotel that was like that you can book for six hours or you can book it for 12 hours and it was a rough raggedy rundown motel or something that was like $72 for 12 hours so and then I transitioned into um moving I mean I wasn't sure how how long it would be before I got my second eight apartment approved so that's why I got a storage unit and put my stuff there temporarily because I had no choice but to because first of all before anything Ramona is a thief and will snoop through your things that's my biological sister she's a thief and will snoop through your stuff and try to see you know try to snoop through all your bags and try to see how much money you have she did that to me a couple of times before so that's why I didn't trust to um leave my stuff at her house. I went to and the, and they had a black lady named Ruth Holmes at one of the U-Haul place on Tulane. She acted like she tried everything she could to, and she was a, a narcissistic rude perp that she tried everything she could to try to block and prevent me from getting the um storage unit. And then she wanted and then she even acted like she wanted to tell certain lies to to um finally get me a freaking storage unit and I'm like wait a minute I, w I didn't say that you know but then it was just a weird situation and it took hours for me to finally get a dog on approved for the storage unit and she almost didn't want to let me rent the um the storage unit van I, I mean the uh, U-Haul van that was when you were still allowed to anybody that was when anybody would be able to pay a hundred dollars cash for a u-haul van or truck or, or or anything like that now to rent a u-haul truck and stuff period you gotta have like a credit card they won't even accept a debit card nowadays so um that roof homeless lady tried to make it like i couldn't have a storage unit unless i had a family member to have authority over my um storage unit i said no I don't trust any of my family members and none of I'm, I'm not whatever storage units they have I don't have authority over their storage units so um it was just a big nasty mess but I even it, 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 it I eventually was able to finally get a dog on storage unit and it, like it came way quicker than than I um than I thought. I think I only had that storage unit for like, I forgot whether it was two days or whether it was a week. And then I was finally able to move in, you know, move into the Section 8 home. I had to pay like a $700 deposit. And um, it's like with that $2,000 after dealing with the, the whole, the $72, 
12-hour hotel room plus dealing with the storage unit situation plus the deposit plus the, the Section 8 home plus trying to buy pots, pans. Um, buy, I needed to buy clothes so bad because I had to leave everything behind in Greenville, South Carolina and stuff like that. Well, if I would have got the $2,000, you know, before, you know, so I didn't, I didn't get the $2,000 until after I set foot in New Orleans, you know, so it's like, wow, I didn't even know I was eligible for this. So, I mean, I, I've told y'all the history. I mean, the foster mom used to, was even taking my twin sister's money too. And she was taking the foster sister Joni's social security check. Joni was getting like $394 from the foster dad, Al. And Danielle from the Kraft family was the one who who opened up the mail and said that, you know, the, that Joni, this is your money. And that, but Joni acted like she didn't really care, you know. But the foster mom, you know, she tried to take whatever um, just for control. It's like, how the hell are you rich person robbing poor homeless foster? Well, I mean, we weren't homeless, but, you know. Poor foster children. Joni was adopted. But the foster mom would take all of our possessions and just claim it as hers. So, um, of course, other abusive people would defend and take up with the fake foster mom. So, are they going to make like they don't believe anything that I'm spewing out? You know, and she even was at a point in time was taking Joni's brother's James, Joni's brother James' money also. She was even taking James' money at at some point, at one point. <clears throat> so um, James was twenty years old and didn't have much freedom until he went into the military. In the army and you know so <clears throat> look, even Joni and James were 18 19 20 years old and the foster mom kept trying to control and restrict them too and James would laugh about being 20 years old and, and can all he the only thing he if we ask can we go outside and, and he would laugh and say that it's a shame to be you know 20 years old and um, the farthest we can go is like, we can't even go, just barely go across the street. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I was 18, 19, 20 years old, still being controlled and abused and very restricted. See? Well, <clears throat> so I told y'all, I think I told y'all about the job at the Riverwalk in New Orleans, that Auntie Anne's Pretzel place. That um that they had a man who was gonna hire me, but then the foster mom brainwashed him against hiring me, and then he was nitpicky about trying to say that I had a dirty shirt and I'm trying to look like and talk, try to talk about I had stains on my shirt, and it was like a shirt I hardly even wore, and it's like stains where dirty shirt where, <clears throat> but um. And he tried to bully, harass, and lecture me about this dirty shirt I was wearing. When the shirt wasn't even dirty, it was, it was you know, an ROTC t-shirt that I had, you know. And they say you can come and wear anything. So, like, I was trying hard to try to find a job. Seven, I mean, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, even younger than that. And the foster mom just, kept, she kept sabotaging, you know. But I think that the reason why I was workplace mob, I think the foster mom was secretly going behind my back and telling the managers to, you know, keep a close watch on me. Or she probably smear campaigned me to the managers at Popeye's. And um, and that might be why they treated me the way they treated me. They treated me so horribly. And it's like I was forced to just take abuse from other people, you know, because I knew the foster mom wouldn't do anything about it. And then when... I went through what I went through with, um, you know, when I went through what I went through about, um, I went through what I went through about the, um, you know, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so I was in my junior year in high school, 
And they had a boy who threatened to do the Colorado incident on me just for asking him, are you Jay or Joseph Polipovich? Trying to find out he was Joseph. But Joseph, I didn't know that Joseph was a gothic Satanist. I didn't know that. And so um, I said, are you Joe or Jay Polipovich? And so he got an attitude with me for no reason at all. And he was a perp. I didn't realize, come to think of it. Because I don't think about that situation every day. But, you know. Um, and so... I said, well, all I did was ask you, I mean, so he got an attitude with me. And so I said, well, you don't have to get an attitude with me. He said, I'll, I'll do the Colorado incident on you. And he said it in front of the other kids. And so I reported it to the school and they didn't want to do anything. And I told a foster mom about it. And she said that it don't make no sense for you to be right and dead. And he had every right to um threaten you like that and this stuff like that, you know. And she said, it, had made, it makes no sense for you to be right and dead. <clears throat> so the foster mom will always at every turn tell me I deserve to be dead and stuff. Or that I'm going to wind up in jail or dead and deserve it. Or I'm going to be a homeless or grow up to be a, a homeless. Um, a home, she told me I was going to grow up to be a homeless, schizophrenic, drug addicted prostitute. But thankfully, I don't prostitute. I never did drugs. You know, I, I never sold my body. You know, I got raped a couple of times. But no, they never gave me any money, and I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting anything from them. I just wanted them out of my life. <clears throat> you know, but I'm sitting here, you know, being, you know, violated and mentally scarred. <clears throat> so even you know I didn't realize I didn't realize that was part of the human trafficking for men to try to approach me like a prostitute and um it's like I got it so much in Los Angeles and even in um Greenville South Carolina men try to and I would wear like a sweatshirt and hoodie I'm mean, I'm sorry sweatpants and a hoodie and men still want us to try to approach me and treat me like a prostitute no matter how short or long my hair was so, um, I heard sad stories about how women are forced to have their hair cut short like a guy as a survival mechanism to prevent from being sexually assaulted and raped on the streets, you know, if they got to be homeless on the streets and if they want to just do the right thing and try to better themselves, if they don't want to, um, you know, if they don't want to fall into that lifestyle of prostitution and, um, Stuff like that. They don't want a prostitute or nothing, you know. <clears throat> so, but I mean, I, the foster mom, if she didn't tell her other kids, I mean, her biological kids, she didn't treat them like that. And she wasn't taking their money. She wasn't abusing them. She wasn't forcing them to go to the IDMR cult meetings at three times a week. You know, she wasn't brainwashing them. You know, she treated them like natural children. But she abused us for money. And kept me financially deprived. And just ruined my freaking life. It's like her, she ran her house like a cult. And she ran her house like a prison. Yep. Money hungry prison scam cult was Adrian Felder's house. Just like the fake shelters, exploitative money hungry prison scam cult. Like, the, we had no freedom. Like, we stayed locked up in the house all day, every day. The, being forced to just clean up. Like, some people say what the foster mom did to us was labor trafficking. Like, come on, the, the price that we got to wash dishes every single day. Sometimes three times a day, wash dishes. And we get, like, the most severe. It's like the foster stepdad was a perp and would deliberately... If I be 17 years old, coming home from work, wash the dishes, and then clean out the sink, clean out everything, do everything they say I felt like I was supposed to do, then go to bed. An hour later, the foster stepdad come into the kitchen on purpose, wait till after I wash the dishes to come into the kitchen and um cook, like cook some din dinner for himself. 
and then put dirty dishes in the sink and then lied to the foster mom and said that I didn't wash all that I'm nasty and dirty and didn't wash all the dishes and then the foster mom would force me to have another week as a punishment to clean the kitchen while my twin sister didn't have to do nothing my twin sister always had was able to have more friends and more phone privileges than I was if I had a friend the foster mom would sabotage that friendship and my twin sister picked up the foster mom's abuse and as long as my twin sister is a compulsive liar, and she's a manipul manipulative, a manipulative, abusive liar, then we definitely could never get along. And she's very controlling. She picked up where the foster mom left with the abuse and everything. And, you know, treat me like a, a punished baby or something. And it's like the entire biological family is um, abusive towards me because of her lies. Because of my twin sister, she went and smear campaigned me to the biological family. and had the, the biological family have a certain opinion about me, but then they ended up hating her too. But then she'll get more accepted in the family before I would. Like, my twin sister, she would get into an argument or, or something with Ramona. Never, they never had any fights, physical fights. But Ramona has abused and put her hands on me quite a few times. But if Brandy and Ramona get into an argument, you know, they can be back friends five minutes later. But it's been almost four years that I still never heard from Ramona or don't, don't speak to her. And many other family members. <clears throat> so, um, you know, if certain family members have cars in the house or apartment and they're um, financially well off, and they make sure I'm not allowed to stay over by them, you know. But... I don't know if I said it, but like the dream I had, the first dream I had, I had housing. And then the second dream that I had, I was staying by the, as a portrayal of me staying by the, living with the foster sister Joni. Like in a dream, the foster sister Joni let me come and stay with her. But I know in real life that would never happen. But Joni's programmed to hate me too. You know, Joni and James and all of them, they they programmed to and brainwashed to eternally hate me. So, um, it's like, I know that with my disability and everything, I would, no, people aren't really helping me to get my own place again. Because, I, I mean, I don't want to live in your house and tell you that, you know, you can't watch TV because, you know, if people watch TV, then, you know, if they blast loud TV, then it hurt my ears and stuff. You know, my ears are sensitive. So I would rather have my own place to live. And um, they are blocking me from getting many job opportunities and stuff like that, you know. And each time I get a job, the online perps, they find out about it and then sab they try to find where I work and then sabotage the job. And it's like, even if I don't say anything, it's like they, um, it's like they still figure out or find out, you, you know, and, they, and they're, they're malicious, very malicious, <clears throat> malicious and very evil. You know, and so it's just a big mess that the people who actually are perping are falsely glorified as good people. The good and righteous people who everybody defends, like they can do no wrong. But me being targeted, I'm not allowed to have a voice on my own YouTube channel. On my own channel, I'm not allowed to have a voice. So, um, 
and then like gotta be forced low income and then be told to manage it. it's like well you don't know what, what the restrictions are or what 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 kind of difficult life i'm forced to live as a, being targeted like that lady yesterday was trying to um ask me tell me about this homeless street survival guide <clears throat> and she said well they have plenty of resources do and, and she was a narcissistic abuser, and I could tell that she was a, a cerebral narc, a know-it-all narc. Like, she gave me this manipulative face before I, a manipulative fear-mongering facial expression before I can, before I can even answer her question. That's like how some, a narcissistic abuser will ask you a question, and then they'll try to instill fear-mongering before you can even get out, get, get, the, get the answer out, they get like a fear-mongering um a fear-mongering kind of um tell the truth now before you can eat and they try to frighten and scare you trying to be like tell the truth now before you before you can even get the answer out and then that kind of scrambles your mind a little bit and make you fearful and, and scared and um you know and the narcissist, a person with who's a narcissistic abuser, they spread a whole bunch of lies. But then, they always they make it like you're always under, you always up to no good. But then they say you're the paranoid one. But that they're, they're the ones who's paranoid of you. So if they ask you a question, and then they be like, "Tell the truth now." And but this lady gave me this. She gave. I, I mean, she she gave me this facial expression, like wanting to demand honesty from me. So she said, well, have you used the resources? And then she quickly made this facial expression that she thought I was, I was going to potentially lie to her. And she said, they have plenty of resources and plenty of help in that book. But it's like, all I could say, tell her was, it's a long story what I've got to go through. And don't be freaking judgmental. So she gave me this application for these trailers that every time I try to look into, into these trailers they're always booked so she told me that oh yeah well the way these girls bring in men she, these girls let their boyfriends come live with them and then the boyfriend always go to jail so so that so then they're always getting kicked out because their boyfriend went to jail so yeah, that's how there's always openings. And I'm like, lady, you don't know what you're talking about, you know. So, so um, well, I didn't tell her that to her face, but you know, I was just thinking in my head, you don't know what you're talking about, because I know what I had to suffer through, you know. But then again, it's possible that they will lie to a target and say we ain't got no openings in the same way that they will lie to a target. If they, if you see a big fat ass now hiring sign and inquire within, and then it used to happen to me growing up, you know, now hiring, I go and put an application. They say, Oh, well, um, no, we're not hiring at the moment, but you can put in the application. I'm like, but there's a big now hiring sign right out there. Oh, I'm sorry. We have all our people. Then next thing you know, a new person come a week later and I'm like, well, Hey, I thought that, um, you know, I thought that they weren't hiring. They said, "Well, oh, well, um, I I got the I got applied yesterday and got the interview, and I got hired on the spot. Now here's my first day right here." And I'm like, "What? They do that? They have done that to me? Like they had the cottage that I was supposed to get to apply to live in, four seventy five a month, and the man didn't even require three and a half times the rent. This was before the you know what started two years ago, and so then two and a half years ago almost. So then." I told them, I mean, the man had um, refused to give me the cottage. And he juiced my head up and gave me false hopes and false promises to, that he was going to rent me the cottage. And, and, and it, it would have been in, like in a really good spot. <clears throat> and, so, and so with the cottage, <clears throat> he, um, with the cottage, he, he had, um, you know, he kept on putting up the ad on Craigslist and Thrifty Nickel. And, um, but after he told, after he, um, you know, why would you keep on renewing the ad if you lied to me and said that somebody had occupied the place already? 
so that so um and there was another place and on not off a nine mile road here in Pensacola the man actually came to UWF campus and delivered me the papers to try to fill out the paperwork and stuff to um rent that place and, and the gang stalkers they sabotaged it I'm like damn so y'all don't know what what methods I've been trying even when I got the stimulus check the fourteen hundred dollar stimulus check I try to get housing and um I tr that I couldn't find housing and so I try to rent that room that four hundred dollar room that lady was a, a fake Christian scam, gang stalking scammer who um cheated me out of my money and um I was forced to have to replace everything and then I resorted to having to stay at hotels and they doubled the prices on hotels so then the online gang stalkers falsely accusing me of spending $200 pairs of shoes and stuff or $400 worth of shoes and stuff and that wasn't true they, and they lie and over exaggerate everything and then they tell lies and then laugh about their lies and then when when they see me winning and getting the upper hand like the help with the hotel room that's when they have meltdowns like oh you didn't deserve that but y'all are financially well off they don't want me to work they don't my twin sister doesn't want me to work she don't want me with a job she don't want me with a car she don't want me with housing she don't want me with a hotel room. She don't want me with food. She don't want me with nothing. And then reverse it on me. And she don't want me with friends and support or a boyfriend or a husband. And then she would reverse it on me and lie and say that I'm the one who doesn't want her with these things. When I never said that she couldn't have a car or that I didn't want her with the car. But numerous times she insinuated that she didn't want me driving or even so much as renting a car or nothing. But she sees herself, because the foster family brainwashed her to feel like she's more worthy and more deserving than me. She, that's So that's why I feel like her acting like that, she has to be a Masonic, Satanic sellout. And her symbolism has proved it. And then people will still rather go with, along with my twin sister against me. It's like, you see, if you pointed out to me her symbolism, and then you turn, like, you a, you a perp too. So, um, they got too many wolves in sheep's clothing here, you know, and then some people who, be before they betray me, they, be they would tell me that I how much light that I exude, that I'm so full of light and everything like that, you know, or that, you know, that they'll be like, oh, well, you, you know, you're such a beautiful soul, or you're a kind spirit, is that whatever, and so... It's, it's like me, me being constantly taken advantage of or abused and then not, people with narcissistic personalities they make like they don't want to hear it but I think that people are nice and normal and then once they get corrupted or compromised that's when they become big headed and narcissistic it comes with the territory that, that's when they get big headed and narcissistic and so um, just ruining my life you know so um i've tried whatever i could they even set me up to be stranded and they sabotaged me with a couple of cab driving jobs i mean i nobody would hire me in 2017 and all i could get was a cab driving job and everybody making like i deserve to get robbed or i deserve to get murdered for being a cab driver or you stupid for trying to get that job and this and that whatever or a cab driving is a dangerous job. You shouldn't do it. And um, But, like, how y'all expect me to live or survive then? And I said that Social Security failed me. The Ticket to Work program failed me. Um, vocational rehabilitation failed me. And um, the entire system fails targeted individuals. You know, that they make sure that you can't, um, that you're not allowed to have any support system at all. And then you feel constantly gaslit and then people abuse their so-called power, like to ban you from forever from a certain place of business. I like for, for something so minuscule and small. 
it's like they wouldn't do that to other people who weren't targeted in the same scenario happened. So it's it's like I was trying to say that Michael Greenfield motherfucker, he got um he got Masonic connections. He got connections at high places, what I was trying to say. So, like I would normally do, once I get out of this hotel room, I won't be able to go to the library. So I'm going to have to just find out where to exist at. Where to go. And then, I, my phone just alerted me that it's supposed to rain. That's why it's so dark in this room. But the light next to me where I slept at in this hotel room, the light where I slept at is um it's not working. So much for a luxury fancy hotel. So much for a luxury fancy hotel that I um the light ain't working in here. So, you know, stained bed sheets, stained mattresses, or mildew mattresses, you call that luxury and fancy, but I freaking deal with it, you know, I don't, I'm not even one of those people who, um, you know, each hotel, if, if I go so, book a hotel room several times, you know, at the same hotel, you know, at whatever diff different room, based on however much help I can get from, you know, donations of other people and stuff. You know, if I go to this hotel or that hotel, um, you know, each hotel room is different. If room 177 is, um, that has a loose toilet seat and, um, and just everything wrong with it. And then the next room could be nearly perfect, but maybe just one lamp that's not working or... They might have another room where the microwave ain't working or another room where the TV ain't working. But I'm not going to be one of those nitpicky people on Google reviews that um just nitpicky about complaining about every minute little detail about the room that they didn't like, you know. So, um, but if I had bad customer service and they banned from me from there, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about it. You know, so, um, I'm going to talk about it. So, I mean, now I don't have enough money to, to for another night in the hotel, so I have to go back on the streets. But, um, at the, the lady had gave me this application for this trailers to live in. But the trailers say three and a half times well, they say um, you have to have minimum three times the rent for the whole, I mean, for the um trailer or whatever. So, but what if I call and they say we have no openings? So, I mean, they kept repeatedly sabotaging my jobs or sabotaging my attempts to, to try to get housing or if I get close to enough money to finally get my own place and then they sabotage it with me being targeted. You know, even if I didn't talk about it or if I didn't say anything. You know, so, um. But. It's like targeted individuals that turn into perps. It seems like it's very tricky to, you know, when you're trying to have better discernment about them. And then they end up secretly gathering intel on you and then use it against you while pretending to be a TI friend. And that's more devastating, you know. Even if they hide behind Christianity or Bible believing, you know, it still hurts. So I woke up this morning around eight o'clock or sometime like that, and um, I woke up around eight o'clock, and and um, uh, I'm a little bit more alert now, but I guess I mean I'm thankful and glad I got the laundry out of the way, 
and um I'm gonna force drag myself into the um into the bathroom and go take a shower another shower I mean today so I mean what if I, that I contact that um that place and they said well that we don't have any openings or if I contact the place and they say well we don't have no openings or they tell me that um you know your income ain't high enough so I've tried that, you know, and even when I got the tax refund money, I was looking for places on Craigslist with my tax refund money and some places didn't call me back. And or they would say that my tax refund check was unacceptable because um <clears throat> I mean I'm like, but I could use that for a deposit, but like no, you don't make the three and a half times the rent with that eight thirty seven a month. So no, you don't qualify. So I saw they, there was a man who had a, like a viral TikTok video where he said that um, everybody was having to um, use extended stay hotels is the new um, way uh, the, the extended stay hotels was the new living for the um, for the poor and homeless and which those are more expensive than regular hotels sometimes. So, but the cheap extended stay hotel, they gang stalked me out of there. So that, um, two seventy five a week. But the um, <clears throat> by that lady Miss Annie, at the extent, oh, what's that place called Hospitality Inn? <clears throat> I mean, if I would have been staying there, then um, you know, it it might have. I'm, it it might have costed me a little bit, you know, but it's like they gang stalked me out of there, and I'm wrongfully banned from there and the Queen Mary. I never even stayed at the Queen Mary, but I'm banned from both of those places, and they both costed the same, like um, two, and, they, and the prices never changed, like thirty nine oh three per day, <clears throat> you know, thirty nine dollars and three cents a day. But you had they changed the policies. You used to be able to pay by the day, but now they want you to pay for a whole week first, and then afterwards you can keep paying like every three days, like one hundred seventeen dollars and nine cents every three days. And so you know they just sabotage and screw that up for me. Like they can gang stalk and harass, harass, harass all day, and if I'm and that's the MK Ultra in trafficking too, because if I shut up about the abuse then I'm rewarded with being treated like normal. But if I speak out against it, then I get treated like a criminal. But see, at the um, downtown library, I would get harassed by the, by um, a, one of the staff members would harass me. That lady I told y'all about, and I don't even know her name, but she's narcissistic enough to probably be the manager. And then that fake security guard would harass and bully so um he would bully and harass me you know but at the other library that i would go to that library you know there was a point in time i would have issues with the staff harassing me too and one time they had this lady that came to that library just to hit me with director energy weapons all day long the whole day trying to Hit me with the director energy weapons on purpose to try to run me out of there. So if I go to a library frequent, frequently, they find covert and underhanded slick ways to try to make it like as if they don't want me welcome at the library. If I, but then at that other library, if I um listen to a YouTube video, they elevate the staff. They elevate their voices and talk super loud with each other, especially if it's an important video to watch. And then after that, the um. After the video, I mean, after um, I get frustrated and cancel watching the video, that's when they get quiet again. And then I try to feel something kind of hopeful and then try to watch the video again or finish what, where I left off. And then they talk loud again. So they, at, you know, and then when I went to this library called Tryon Library, 
the security guard and the staff were harassing and rude to me too. I only went there a couple of times, so and that's like inconvenient from where, <clears throat> I mean, the buses don't even go right there, so um, that wasn't even a convenient library to go to. And I, the couple of times that I went there, I experienced harassment and stuff. So it's like I have to take the word library out of my vocabulary. So thanks for ruining more of an opportunity for me to live, Michelle Greenfield. <clears throat> I know the satanic Masonic rituals y'all be doing. You want to talk about, oh, we don't use that kind of language up in here. But what about the rituals you do behind closed doors? Tell about that because you look like a pedo. You look like you touch little kids. And I've experienced sexual harassment and other kinds of harassment from homeless men at that library. At the downtown library. Experiencing like sexual harassment and regular harassment from homeless men. So that was one of the reasons why I would go into the quiet rooms. And just try to... And I didn't feel comfortable <clears throat> going down there, you know. So, but the Route 31 acting funny was the reason why, you know, after I started to, you know, be able to ride the buses again, the the buses, I mean, that route running funny is the reason why I can't, certain things I really can't, it's difficult, I can't even really get to do certain things, you know, like, I can't even <clears throat> go certain places and stuff, and it's just so difficult and com inconvenient. So, I'm trying, I need to find some way, I wish that people could help me with housing, you know, and they don't want to, but, you know, I, as I was trying to say with that lady from yesterday, when she told me about, um, when she told me about the, you, you know, the homeless street survival guide, it's like, yeah, they may have a lot of resources, but, you know, I couldn't tell her I'm a targeted individual, so that's why they the majority of these resources are denied or sabotaged. I can't even use a lot of those doggone resources. I can't go to the Waterfront Mission Day Center, or I can't go to, um, what's the other one? The Washburn Center. I can't go to those places. Other targeted individuals, they don't even have OCD like I do. And maybe they might have some other TIs with OCD, but I just don't know about them. And so other targeted individuals, if they're forced to be homeless, they can't even go such and such place. And they're forced to just live on the streets. And then if they get live on the streets, the police harass them. Like me being homeless on the streets in Greenville, South Carolina or Mobile, Alabama, the police will harass me to the point where like they want me to be unseen. Like, and that's why, that was the start of why I had to keep asking for a hotel room every night in Mobile, Alabama, when Alex ran me out of Pensacola. And we were on lockdown or, uh, and stuff like that, you know. But as I said, it's like the moment pe the perps see you being comfortable with somebody and somebody likes you and, you know, they treat you kind and caring and gentle and everything, they sabotage it. Or they have a set-up scenario to manipulate you to where you wrongfully banned. So I was used to be very much welcome. They used to love me at Bodacious. And then before my eyes, they switched out all the staff with nothing but narcissistic perps. They used to love me to the point where they were giving me free food and stuff. Or buying my meals for me. But the moment I went to the YMCA, they were they they were rude, rude and always harassing me from day one. <clears throat> I've seen videos of other targeted individuals if they um go to a gym or a YMCA and they get harassed. So, um, I have so it's like I can't even go to the library. So where am I supposed to focus? And if I gotta be on the streets, where where am I supposed to be able to focus on my writings and stuff?
oh, y'all want to cancel that or make force me to stop writing. You know, I, it's just uh, insane what they're doing. Like, and it's like, if you've been trying for three, three years, we'll make you think you can succeed. We'll make you think you're going to keep trying for five more years. And they brag about how to, uh, they brag about my own black people brag about getting, getting rid of me for good. <clears throat> you know, getting me put away once and for all. So that's why some profess, t- it's like when you speak out, you get punished. But if you're quiet, you get rewarded to, to, be, to live like a normal citizen. <clears throat> so that's why I profess targeted individuals. They want they want to say shut up and ignore and don't pay attention to them don't give them but then when you when you be quiet sometimes they harass you and you ignore them they will find other tactics to get you to provoke you and then when you lash out with that narcissistic abuse and reactive abuse then oh you can get it, go to jail but they, but they while well, they can still keep their jobs and then they single you out and tell you your about your inappropriate behavior. But what about theirs? Oh, we're not we're not worried about them. I don't I don't want to hear what they did. I'm focusing on you. Yeah, that's favoritism. <clears throat> the biological brother Sean was talking about favoritismistic people. <clears throat> he he didn't pronounce it properly. But um, he said favoritismistic people. So, um, it's like they choose favoritism. So it's like basically an MK ultra reward and punishment program that if you speak out, you get punished. But if you be quiet, that you get re- and, and take the abuse, then you get rewarded. It's like if I didn't show proof of my gang stalking and it's like they harass and harass and harass and harass until they provoke you to, to do something. But I'm hypersensitive. And highly sensitive, I'm considered what you call a highly sensitive person already. You know, hypersensitive to everything. And that's why some people might wonder if I have Asperger's or high-functioning autism. <clears throat> and so um, if I'm considered a highly sensitive person, well, I'm sensitive to everything. And pe- many people say that I'm an empath. But then when they turn against me after, even the narcs tell me, narcissistic abusers even tell me that I'm an empath. But they'd be like, you're an empath like me. No, motherfucker, you ain't no empath. Not you. So, um, <clears throat> so I mean, it's like a MK Ultra reward and punishment program, you know. So... It's like I have to go where I'm welcome. So if somebody shun you, for, oh, you've been here for two hours, or you've been for over here for over two hours, you know, that, those are places that don't like you. But certain places, if I get to go there and they, you know, let me charge my phone and they'd be like, well, you can sit here as long as you want, you know. And I'm like, well, thank you, you know, for letting me sit there for as long as I want or as long as I need to charge my phone. But then people want to talk about me acting like a coward with my gang stalking. They'll be like, oh, you, you act like you're scared. So, I mean, damned if I do, damned if I don't. If they say ignore them, but then they say keep documenting and recording. And I'm like, you're giving double messages there. So, um... I dreadfully am going to have to be back on the streets to t- tonight and tomorrow night. And I haven't, I, I made a mistake and didn't check the weather. And then, um, Wednesday I get my social security check. I need to find some work opportunity, you know, and, it's, I, and, and one thing I want to clarify is the online perps try to say, yeah, Candy's greedy behind was asking for money for steel toe boots and work pants. Before she even got hired, that's how you know she was trying to scam people. I said, no, I was not trying to do that. I said that I, if I was trying to scam people, I'd be trying to get the money. But I said, I even said, hold off on that until I, I said, I said, I might need help with that. And I said, hold off on that. 
I told everybody hold off and don't worry about that at the moment until after. But I was I this is taking longer than I thought. And I don't know. I mean, I thought that they were they led me they led me on to think that they hire any and everybody and that they were gonna hire us right on the spot or that it was gonna take like a week or two. But it's already August. They said we were supposed to have been had our training. It's already August. And one guy told me, you know, when I told one guy at one of the restaurants, he told me, just give up. Don't even worry about it because it's been too long. Like if they were saying, oh, we're just waiting on the background checks and stuff. So it will be something if everybody else is working and, I'm, and I didn't get selected. But I asked, well, how, how do we know we hire? They make it like, oh, we hire anybody who wants to work. So that job is out the question. I at least tried. Even after dealing with Avis and said, look, I'm not even going to, I don't want to deal with employment no more. But then I bounced back up and tried again. And so they probably didn't even hire me. I don't know. So um, they they just leaving me hanging. So I wish I had help with the entrepreneurial app, app opportunity. But I mean, these perps think I don't deserve to live. They treat me like I don't de- that like I don't have a right to live or like I don't deserve to live. So thanks for letting me vent and um I'm going to go take care of my hygiene right now while I have the opportunity. <laughs>